Whiskey 4, Delta Delta X-ray. Whiskey 4 Station, come back uh, with your call sign again slowly phonetically. Call sign again slowly phonetically. Whiskey 4, Delta Delta X-ray. Roger, Roger, Delta Delta X-ray, what's the name there? The name here is Jim. Hey, what's the name there? The name here is Jim. Uh, hello, Jim, this is John uh, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Roger. Well, actually, a little town called Marion, right off the coast. Roger, Roger, I have a, an excellent copy of you on the uh, Milford uh, SDR. You look to be about uh, 12 over on the Milford SDR, Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. Roger, I got a good, good signal coming in here too. About a, about a nine to ten over. Sounding real clear. Uh, I'm using the Sun SDR. Uh, what kind of SDR was that you're running? What kind of SDR was that you're running? A little MOSFET. So uh, it's doing about uh, somewhere around a hundred watt PET there, right? Uh, Roger, Roger. We might have doubled there just a little bit. Uh, what's the uh, nomenclature on the SDR that you're running? Sure, on the SDR that you're running? Uh, it's a Sun SDR. Sun SDR QRP. And uh, it does about anywhere from 1 to 5 watts. But I've got it driving a little uh, multi-man MOSFET and it's doing about 100 watt DB. Oh, Roger that, Roger that. Just out of curiosity, uh, can you drop to 100 watts, and uh, I mean to 1 watt, and I'll see if I can copy you on the Milford SDR. On the Milford SDR. Yes, sir. Uh, you were giving me, uh, or giving the Milford SDR a 6 over their noise level, 6 dB over their noise level at 1 watt, Roger. Noise level at 1 watt, Roger. Well, uh, I'm on 1 watt here. Sounded real good, too. Uh, what, uh, what SDR rig are you using there? Uh, this is uh, an older uh, um, radio. It's an FT990, an older ICOM. Uh, FT-990. Uh, rather, Yezu, I'm sorry. It's so old I can't even remember its name. Or, or mine sometimes. Or, or mine sometimes. Okay, okay. Well, it's sounding real good. Oh, it's here. It's sounding out of you there, Roger. Oh, okay. That's all right. I just want to watch. I guess this, uh, this antenna's working pretty deep. Uh, yes, sir, I would say so. Now, uh, if you could come up back to 100 watts, <laughs> it's it's a more more fun to copy you at 100 watts, Roger. To copy you at 100 watts, Roger. Oh, I imagine. Uh, I would uh, imagine so. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a long wire, uh, 130 foot long with a 9 to 1 uh, matching transformer at, uh, at the end, so it covers from all the way from 80 to 10 meters. And uh, I've got it about 70 foot in the air. Yeah, Roger. Roger, doing a good job. Now, uh, if you could tell me just a little bit more about your antenna for about 10 or 15 seconds, I'll try uh, switching over to my uh, uh, local antenna, Roger. Yeah, a local antenna, Roger. Um, yes, it's a, uh, a wire, and it's uh, actually... Uh, um, and it covers pretty much 8 to 10 meters flat. Um, no matching network needed. Um, high as the SWR goes is 1.8, and I think that's on uh, 10 meters. Um, everywhere else is below 1.8, Roger. Roger, well, we have some poor, f pathetic soul that needs it uh, necessary, finds it necessary to tune up on the frequency. I don't understand why they decide to tune up on an active frequency. It doesn't make good sense. But uh, I guess uh, to each his own. Uh, John, uh, how long have you been uh, on uh, amateur radio? Uh, probably about a year. I would say a year. About a year or so, though, right? 
Roger, well, newcomer, <laughs> relative newcomer. And what radio was that you're running today? Uh, Sun SDR QRP. Uh, Sun SDR QRP is about the size of a little bit bigger than a cigarette pack, Roger. Right? Roger, Roger. Now, what does that have for like a 12 volt input? Um, yes, it's 12 volt. Um, 12 volt input. It, uh, on low power setting, it'll do one watt. High power, it does five. Well, you can get variable. You can put it at two watt, three watt, but five uh, maxed out there, Roger. Oh, Roger that. Well, it sounds really good. The uh, audio uh, curve is is nice too. Could use. Uh, I'm. I guess it doesn't have uh, uh, any built-in EQ. Is that a Roger? Oh, it has anything you could dream of. <laughs> Actually, this is the second day I've used it. Uh, I'm not even monitoring it myself. But yes, it has uh, EQ compressors, multi-band compressors, single band. It's got pretty much anything. Um, I don't even have the EQ turned on. So I have a pretty deep voice, so it may be kind of deep. Uh, no, it's it's uh, well-rounded uh, from one end to the other. Could use just a little more top end for intelligibility, but that's uh, my personal preference. Uh, you know, maybe a, a couple of clicks more treble boost uh, would... Uh, do nicely, but I'm. Sh is that a multi-band uh, equalizer or or three-band, or, or do you know yet? Um. Yes, it's multi-band. I actually raised the the highs up just a little bit there. Um. It's it's multi-band. Well, there's two types. Um. I have the uh, the multi-band equalizer, and well, it's a gra I have a graphic equalizer. Um. You can set it up a single-band equalizer, and it's a multi-band equalizer. There's three different types. And then you have your normal filters. It's got a high pad, low pad, high shelf, peak notch. Pretty much anything you can imagine is in there. So I don't know if it broke, but I went up a couple clicks on the high end there, Roger. Uh, yeah, it sounds really nice. Really nice. Uh, and I'm uh, copying you on my uh, local antenna on my uh, dipole. I run uh, five different antennas on a rotary switch for my local receiver. Uh, one is uh, the uh, dipole. One is uh, two is uh, a. Uh, I have three ten-foot vertical magnetic loops. One is at zero degrees. One is at ninety degrees, and one's at one hundred and thirty-four degrees. Uh, right at the moment, the uh, dipole tends to be winning out. Roger. Oh, Roger. How high is your dipole? Dipole is just about thirty-five feet. It's a slight sloper at thirty-five feet. Roger. Yeah, dipole is always doing well for me as a single band antenna. They're hard to beat. Um, I just moved to this location here, so I'm kind of just getting set up. Um, I actually have my tower is standing now at the crank up, and uh, the concrete just settled, and I got a tower, but I have not had a chance to put anything on it, so we on the wire. But uh, a dipole, as uh, far as single band, does really well. Um, they're hard to beat. Uh, that's a Roger. This is a uh, a resonant tuned antenna. For uh, we usually run uh, a um, QSV lag net on uh, 7188 on the Friday afternoons between 3:30 and 5, and it is uh, tuned for that frequency. I have no uh, SWR at all on uh, on this one. Um, on the dipole, and I'm only transmitting on the dipole, and I use the uh, three uh, loops uh, only in receive. I uh, did a little experimentation as I was building my loops and did A-B comparisons from the uh, dipole to the loops at uh, 600 miles and uh, invariably the uh, dipole won, Roger. Roger, I'm sorry that I was clicking and making sure. Wow, I'm a little wide. <laughs> I didn't know it was set that wide. I'm gonna just back that down. I'm at five kilohertz wide. I need to pull that down. I actually didn't even know I was that wide until I got to look at it. Two. Roger, now do you have uh, uh, an AOC meter in that uh, rig? Yes, it has an AOC meter. It's a monitor AOC. 
Roger. Uh, well, I, you know, the ALC is Bible. Uh, the ALC is Bible for your radio, so uh, uh, I would run, uh, we recommend running that uh, ALC mid-scale to two-thirds. Uh, engaging the compressor. It starts a, a generic tune-up procedure. Starts with uh, engaging the compressor at a three. Uh, compressor on and at a three. Then to the AOC with mic gain in hand and adjust the AOC for a mid scale to two thirds, where you speak fairly rapidly to bring the meter up so you can read it. But a mid scale to two thirds, and that'll give you a three dB uh, dynamic range uh, on your audio, Roger. It's probably going to kill my high end. <laughs> my voice is so deep. Come on. So you, you've had that radio a couple of days? John, I did lose you there. I don't know exactly what happened, but... This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor to uh, W4DDX. Uh, John, are you still there, buddy? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm sorry about that delay. Um, uh, kind of in and out. I'm not sure exactly what's what's happening there. Oh, Roger. Well, you're getting your uh, DC uh, transmit uh, voltage off of Firewire? Uh, no, it's coming from a 12 volt power supply. Um, and I accidentally hit the switch because I had it close to it. And I reached over there and I, and I hit the off button on the power supply, so it rebooted uh, uh, the SDR. So it had to reboot and reconnect to the Firewire. Oh, Roger that. Roger that. The glory of electronics. Yeah, I like it. Um, I like it. Uh, um, I'm a, you know, I, I like it. I'm also a AM buff. Um, I love AM. Um, I like sideband. You're not supposed to but, uh, but uh, I love sideband, but I'm a, and this thing does really well at AM also. Um, it's clean as a bell. Uh, um, I can set my wheels. It just does a really good job on AM as well with a lot of sideband rigs doesn't do that great in AM, and a lot of AM reads don't do that great in sideband, so this is pretty, pretty much, both of them pretty well. Oh, roger that, roger that. I'm a AM buff myself. I spent uh, 50 years in commercial broadcasting, all of it in uh, AM uh, radio stations, uh, so I really love AM. Uh, oh, but uh, ham AM is different from commercial uh, uh, AM in that uh, commercial uh, AM stations are running a constant, say, 5,000 watts. And so they have plenty of quieting, whereas uh, amateur uh, AM is, uh, you know, they have a very low resting wattage, then modulating forward to like 1,500 uh, watts or so. But they don't have the quieting that... Uh, you know, commercial uh, AM stations do, obviously. Noisier on the band because you don't have that power out there, but... Yeah, I love that power out there, but... 
Yeah, I love AM. Actually, I started. My grandfather was a uh, my grandfather was an engineer, and he worked for Harris for a little while and, and a few different other companies uh, back in the day. And I used to work in the shop with him is where I got started. And uh, actually, that was my first part-time job after working on warranty uh, repairs. <laughs> Uh, so I learned pretty much uh, that side of it all my life growing up, but only recently did I decide I wanted to start talking on ham radio and actually doing it, so um, I went and took my, I didn't even try for the, the last one, so I went and took my first two tests, and I didn't even study, actually. I just went up there and took the first two. I should have went ahead and took the third one, and I passed them, and here I am now, I just... Oh, right to that. That's great. That is really great. And uh, so you, you're liking, liking to be uh, on on the air, Roger. Or before, I think you were like a technical kind of a radio person, and now you're uh, you're on the air, Roger. Yeah, I did it as a hobby. Um, I restored old, uh, and then I got into a hi-fi audio, a home audio, and I built two amplifiers for uh, home, just pill around. And I'm like, I know, I actually engineer for Duke Energy, so, I mean, that's what I went to college for, is engineer, and it just, I didn't realize that I liked radio. I didn't realize that I liked radio until I got out with a friend, and I already knew all this stuff, and I was like, hey, I knew basically all this already, I just, uh, so I should get started, and this is where I am, now I'm talking. Roger, Roger. Well, welcome aboard, sir. Glad to glad to have you aboard. Uh, you know, uh, uh, amateur radio is I find just uh, extremely interesting, and all of the um, uh, the folklore about uh, amateur radio, the the Elmer aspects of uh, the older. Uh, operators teaching the new operators uh, uh, all about it and how to how to do things. Uh, you know, it's just a, a great hobby, I think. Uh, you know, it's just a, a great hobby, I think. It is. Um, I like it. I mean, like I said, I've been in a year. Uh, uh, I like it. You know, there's good and bad with everything. And, uh, you know, everybody say, well, hey, I'm on the radio is dying. There's nobody on the bands. But all you got to do is get on the key up. That's what I do. And most times somebody comes back, even if it's dead quiet. So um, quit watching a pan adapter and just key up and call CQ. And so most of the time somebody comes back, right? Oh, that's, uh, that's a Roger there for sure. And the pan adapter uh, leaves you uh, with the uh, capabilities of being able to see, uh, you know, other uh, transmitters on the air and uh, check them out, you know. So I think that's a, a good thing, too. Uh. Uh, you know, the, it's just am amazing the uh, uh, the technology that's available in uh, current uh, amateur radios, Roger. In the current uh, amateur radios, Roger. Yeah, I was at my friend of mine's house the other day, and he turned his radio on and looked across the pan adapter. So there's nobody on. It's just nobody talking. I said, "We key up, call CQ." And as uh, soon as he called CQ, bam. Uh, and then 15 minutes later, pretty much the whole band on that side was active. They were just waiting on somebody to talk, I guess. Roger. Yes, that's that's the way it is many times, many times. Well, uh, John, I appreciate the comeback, sir. We are actually testing our uh, uh, operation here. We just put in a thing called an RF region detector, which is... Uh, <laughs> It's a glorified uh, map of the United States that has uh, the different regions uh, marked off, uh, and uh, we've uh, put uh, uh, neon, uh, not neon, but uh, LEDs, lights, uh, to uh, uh, show the uh, different uh, regions. And uh, we do, on our QSOV like net, um, you know, it's another uh, thing for us to... Uh, to show the the regions uh, that we're uh, talking to uh, as we talk, and uh, we are recording this, John. And if you would like to hear it, uh, uh, we were going to be loading it up onto YouTube here very shortly, uh, so we can uh, check out our uh, our map and see what it looks like. And uh, if you go to YouTube, say in a couple of hours, and uh, do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie Nine Victor Kilo Victor. Uh, that will take you uh, to our QSO VLOG page. 
Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, what you need to do is do a call, go to YouTube, do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, along with today's date, 10 21 21, and that will take you to this recording. Now, there, we have made another test uh, today, so there will be two shows that uh, it will come up as uh, 10 21 21, but uh, yours you will be marked with your call sign. Roger? Will be marked with your call sign. Roger? Uh, Roger, Roger. Victor, Kilo, Victor. In a couple of hours, we're going to probably upload it here sooner, but uh, within a couple of hours, it should be available. So YouTube, ser YouTube search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo, Victor. And like I say, there are two uh, programs with uh, test uh, 10, 21, 21. Uh, and uh, th this one will have your call sign. And we did record the uh, QRP part two, so you'll be able to hear what that sounded like. Part two, so you'll be able to hear what that sounded like. check that RF detector out uh, and uh, see what it's about. That sounds neat with lights all over the map. I guess it's, it lights up and tells you what regions are active. I'm guessing that's what it does. I want to look into that actually to see uh, what it is there, Roger. Roger, as you were speaking, I'm going around the horn uh, to the uh, different uh, regions. It, you know, when we actually put it in operation, uh, we will have it... Uh, off until the person gives their call sign and then we'll uh, uh, adjust it to that region and then uh, turn it on so it'll be uh, kind of uh, automatic and I'm just right now I'm just rolling around the United States and the different regions uh, I was uh, on the uh, w uh, the 4 region and I'll go back to that uh, there we go back on 4 Roger No, uh -uh. it's just uh, to show the regions that the uh, transmission is coming from. It's a glorified uh, play toy, <laughs> but it, it looks uh, impressive. Uh, so, um, but we do usually run four uh, internet SDR receivers along with our three uh, local mag loops. So, and uh, the main thing is that we go to extensive. Uh, uh, levels of uh, to receive as best signals as possible, as clean as possible, and uh, in our audio system that we're monitoring with is uh, down to a hundred cycles on uh, on uh, our ears, so we can actually hear what uh, we're doing as we set up, uh, uh, you know, um, transmitters. It's, if you can't hear the bottom end, you don't know. <laughs> You know, you're in a bad situation. Most of these SDRs roll out at about 250 cycles. There's only one SDR th in the area that uh, actually um, uh, it goes down to 100 cycles, and that's uh, uh, Virginia. I forget. I don't have... I've got these four... Uh, uh, they're um, Amazon uh, Fire Tablets. And the, the, the one that has the name and the one that we use the most, I've uh, called that one as my personal one between Fridays. I, I run with that. It's, I think it's Arlington. The Arlington SDR is the only one that really runs down to 100 cycles on the bottom end. The rest are roll out at about 250 cycles. But we are down to 100 cycles on our, uh, our, our local uh, receiver. Roger. Trying to 
get some of the bottom in out of my voice. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm cutting pretty hard down low there, Roger. Yeah, it looks like about uh, 300 cycles. I've got a spectrum analyzer on the set, and I've been looking at your audio, so uh, that's another thing. Uh, let me, uh, uh, I'll tell you about that. The spectrum analyzer has uh, three white marks on it. The uh, mark to the left of the spectrum analyzer down towards the end, left-hand side. Down at the end is 100 cycles. And then as you look to the right-hand side of the spectrum analyzer, uh, there's a, as you move out, the first white mark is 1KC, then there's a black mark, which is 2KC, and then the next white mark is 4KC. So that's how you read my spectrum analyzer, Roger. Roger, Roger. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I'm actually looking at, because uh, I have, a, it's got a code where you can see your own uh, voice and the, and uh, I'm cutting real hard because if I turn that off, man, it's just it's deep. Uh, my voice is super deep, so and it just gets too bassy. So I mean, I have some, a little bit down in that region, but not a lot. Um, it always, pe I'm peaking around uh, 275-ish up, you know, where everything's pretty level. Uh, so uh, I just have a little bit of energy pass below that, but not very much, all right? Uh, Roger, are you sh you're still pretty full, and you're very uh, accuso uh, capable as far as a curve. You know, you're not super pushed up at the top like a, a lot of folks do, and but you know, a lot of other folks just don't have any top end at all, and they're kind of, uh, you know, just muddy. Uh, and then add that with uh, no uh, dynamic, you know, with uh, like a 10 degree dynamic range, and they're really difficult to copy, you know. Uh, that's why we suggest a 3 dB dynamic range, which is 80 to 85 percent, and uh, a nice crisp uh, articulated top end for intelligibility. Yeah, and I'm actually cutting in the mud frequency around 200-ish, uh, 150 to 200, to like 250, I've got a 4 dB cut, so uh, I'm in the muddy range. Uh, I just kind of guessed at that. But I just kind of guessed at that because that, that, that's normally the muddy range. Actually, while we're talking, I'm going to turn the equalizer off. There's no equalizer. Um, uh, here. I'm going to turn everything off for the CG wise, and this is raw. Um, Yeah, John, uh, I see what you mean about that. You, you is a, a lot of bottom end kind of muddy. Uh, I would definitely run your EQ pattern, Roger. Um, okay, let me turn all that stuff back on. Um, I know mean, that's pretty wild load. Let me get back to that. And let me get back to there. Okay, eat you on, high pass filter back on now. Okay, well I sure appreciate the cue so. Um, I actually just come in from work and uh, thought, uh, you know, took a seat and see if anybody was out there. So uh, I enjoyed chatting with you and I, I really like the idea of your RF uh, detector there and with your region. And while you was telling me that, I said that would be cool if there was a way that you could uh, integrate that that thing you got and uh, to the net and then if a bunch of people was doing one uh, you could come in and turn it on and see the hot regions all across the United States because <laughs> it would be recording automatically and just downloading uh, and you know and uh, everybody would be equal that, would be, that sounds pretty neat but I appreciate uh, the QSO I'm fixing to get out of here and uh, go in the house um, and maybe we can catch each other again uh, Roger Roger, Roger, John. Uh, yes, and uh, you're absolutely correct on your EQ curve. Uh, uh, my compliments. Uh, I didn't realize how uh, how difficult a situation flat was, but you have uh, overcome through EQ. Ah, beautiful job. Uh, so we're going to jump out of here also. Like I say, uh, hear your audio, go to YouTube, do a call letter search, Kilo Charlie 9 Victor, Kilo Victor, along with today's date, 10 21 21. Uh, take you to two recordings. Your call sign will be on one of them. Roger. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, this mic's not great. 
Um, this, this, this is a bad mic. That's why I take so much EQ. I don't know if you hear my, my sons. I don't want to be doing out there. But, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it took a lot of EQ to get this mic um, right. It's a, it's a gaming headset. Um, and the mic on is not that great, but with a little EQ is working. Um, you know, it's like a little $20 headset. Uh, from Walmart. Roger, Roger, John, 73, sir. Have a great afternoon. Beautiful weekend. We'll catch you later. This is uh, KC9 VKV. KC9 VKV KR4HH. Uh, KR4, come back uh, slowly, phonetically, with the call sign again. Uh, Roger, Kilowatt Radio 4, Hotel, Hotel. Hey, Jim, name is Dave. I'm in South Carolina. Roger, Roger, South Carolina, sounding good this way. What radio are you running? Uh, I've got the Anon Apache, uh, Jim. I've had this thing on the air about, well, 10, 14 days. Uh, pretty steep learning curve, but I think I may be getting there. Wow, you're uh, you're 30 over, and you're already probably uh, turning to the pumpkin, right? Uh, gosh, uh, yeah, just uh, on the air to check out some stuff on the set to make sure it doesn't uh, blow up with a KW on. <laughs> it's nothing worse than uh, doing something, have it all set up, then when it comes uh, to uh, turn the power on, the thing goes crazy, Roger. Yeah, the, uh, the smoke test, right? That's right, that's right. And uh, so, but, uh, you know, we've got this map that uh, depicts the region that the signal is coming from. And uh, it uh, right now it's on uh, the four region. Roger, Roger. Yeah, yeah, that's great, Jim. You said great. Yeah, I was looking at the waterfall. You're, you're in the pink. Uh, you're, you're turning everything pink here, which I guess is uh, equivalent to red. Uh, reminded me of the old Pepto-Bismol commercial. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, being the pink, uh, you're in the pink with Pepto Bismol. Remember that? Uh, Roger, now I'm hearing a uh, kind of a delay in the audio. Do you have a monitor on or something like that? Uh, yeah, I do, Jim. Is it uh, very uh, uh, apparent? Yes, sir. It's, you can hear it in the background. It uh, distracts from your voice, Roger. Okay, how about now, Jeff? Still hear something back in there. Uh, is it uh, your earphones or, or a speaker or what? Okay, you shouldn't be hearing it now. Uh, come back and tell me about your antenna system for about 10 seconds and let me listen to you. Okay, Jim, got a 40 meter dipole, uh, about, uh, four, about 40, 45 feet up, inverted V. Uh, that's what I'm using today, okay? Yeah, I still hear something in there that sounds like your voice, but in various stages of delay. So I'm not really sure what it is, but I just make you aware of it that it is, uh, it is audible. I don't see how you're talking. You know, <laughs> as a kid, uh, I was introduced to a delay uh, as I was uh, doing a radio program and doing a cut-in that the guy had a MPEG 602. Two, I think it was, with a uh, a uh, monitor rep uh, repo switch, and he was in uh, repro to be able to hear where to uh, make the cut, and he was still in repro after it. Uh, he uh, punched in, and I was started to talk, and I got about four words out, and I went mid because I was getting uh, playback about uh, oh, an eighth of a second or a quarter of a second uh, retarded, Roger. Yeah, it can really throw you off. Okay, let me go back and, and check and see what uh, what I got going here. Uh, so the delay is still there. Anything else that that you're detected? No, no. It, I, it sounds like your um, your audio is on a uh, a gate, and I can hear the. Uh, your voice uh, in various stages of uh, uh, delay until the gate cuts out, Roger. Okay, I got you, Jim. Okay, I won't hold you. That'll give me something to work on. Uh, thanks, Jim. KR4HH. 
Roger, Roger, KR4HH, and incidentally, we are recording now and have been, and uh, so I'm getting ready to uh, send this up to uh, YouTube. So if you want to hear what's going on there, uh, this will be up on YouTube in about uh, 45 minutes or so, and uh, you'll be able to hear what uh, what's going on. It'll, uh, go to YouTube, do a call letter search, KC9VKV, followed by today's date, 10-21-21. KC9VKV and the date 10 21 21 will take you to this recording and uh, you'll be sharing your recording with uh, john w4 ddx who i was talking to earlier so you both will be there you'll be the the second half of that roger okay thank you jim catch you later kr4 agent roger roger kc9 vkv clear